Well, thanks again for joining me in my shop here. And I got something a little bit different to take a look at. And that's this. Okay. There we go. What the heck is this? Well, this is one of the major parts, and there's four, five, six major parts in a jukebox. And this is one of them. And uh, this is the part, this is called the selection receiver. And what it does is uh, it uh, connects to the buttons on the front of the jukebox. See all these here? So uh, to pick a record out of the jukebox you have to make a selection based on a letter and a number. So these are all the letters and these are all the numbers. So this is A, B, C, D. So the button is on the front. Of course you don't see any of this. So you push the button in. Well it won't hold. And you push in and say it won't hold because of course, this machine is not in the jukebox right now, but uh, it's in a state as if there has not been a coin put in. But if I imitate the coin by doing this, then when you pick a particular letter, A, B, C, D, it locks in. And a number, one, two, three, four, five, six, let's say, I think that's seven. And there you are. You've made your selection. Now, what the jukebox would do, though, as soon as you push two of these in. As soon as you get the second one in, that sets a whole bunch of uh, stuff in motion and uh, the result is this thing I'm holding will drop out and it releases the two buttons. So, uh, so that's what's going on with the jukebox and there's some cool stuff about this mechanism. One is, let me pretend the coin just went in, if you push a letter and then go, you know what, no, no, I don't want that, or, or number, it doesn't matter. I don't want that, I want something else. You can go ahead and push something else, all you like. It's just when you push the next, when you push the uh, the letter, that's what would happen right there. Just like that. Now, why have I got this here in my shop? <laughs> uh, just lucky, I guess. Um, I'm taking care of a jukebox for a local restaurant uh, here in the city I live in. And uh, it's a uh, original jukebox, uh, which are with original uh, table wall boxes throughout, 13 of them all together. And uh, everything is working just as it did back when this was built originally. I think this was put together, this would have been manufactured in uh, 54, 55, 1956, somewhere in that range. So now the reason it's here and not in the jukebox, because the jukebox isn't working without it, is uh, part of it uh, overheated. And uh, we're going to take a close look. That's this over here. We're going to take a, a close look at it. So uh, let me give you a little bit of a close-up camera tour of it. And we'll just take a look at a few, a few things. So let me check my focus here. Okay, so we're focused in pretty close. So here, here's the buttons I was pushing, right here. And you can see there's a pile of contacts and wires back here. Not unlike what you might see in a radio. Very similar sort of construction. Okay, and you can see some mechanics here, which I'll move a little bit. Doesn't move much. Lots of the springs. Of, uh, kind of right open in space type switches here. That uh, there's another one over here. There's one set, one for the numbers, one for the letters. Uh, some of these switches are critical in that they affect timing of the start and stop of different things, and they need to be coordinated. So they're not as they're not uh, as unengineered as they might appear. These are really, really carefully done. So, uh, lots of
lots of springs for this mechanism here. Now let me just back off the focus because it's just a little bit too close. further back, I think. There we go. Okay, so your your eyes are probably spotting something at this point. Things are looking a little extra black in here. With this and with this. And that's what we're gonna look at in a in a moment. And we're gonna look at this curious switch here. So now so someone drops a coin in and then this mechanism that I'm I'm moving over here. Pulls in because of this solenoid, this coil, which is energized. Now it's, it's energized very strongly, and uh, uh, in order to keep it from overheating, this resistor and this switch come into play. First, I want you to notice. I mean, I've looked this thing over pretty closely already, so see how loose that is? That's why this thing ended up smoking so badly. Look at that. We'll take a really close look at that because I really have to examine this to see how damaged it is. So the idea is you put a coin in, this is energized, this snaps closed, and that enables these buttons to be depressed. And once the buttons are depressed, the uh, you see this big bundle of wires down to this big plug carries the pattern of the buttons down into another part of the machine. So, um, now, what's going on here? One of the last things I, I really want to see in a situation like this is something somebody did that's not part of the standard machine, and that's what this is. Uh, this switch is not really supposed to be here doesn't appear on the information that I have and you can tell it's been kind of stuck in there it's very loose isn't it it's really loose so what's the idea of this so I took a close look at the uh, connections here there's a normally open and a normally closed position and then when the switch activates the uh, like for instance if it was normally closed it would open the power that reaches this coil just comes in on this wire. Things are in rough shape here. I don't want to move them too much. Or this wire, the other end of the coil. And, and, and you see the coil is cut, and I'm the one who cut the coil. It's cut these wires to it. That was to keep the jukebox going for a little bit until I could get this and bring it down to my shop to do a closer look. And I didn't want any power going through this coil no matter what. So. So the way this switch operates is, is when the coil goes, it's kind of hard to see here because of this. That piece there moves and it's supposed to depress the micro switch, but the micro switch is not in the right position for that to happen. So the micro switch did not get depressed. So full power is delivered through the normally closed contacts of the micro switch into the solenoid, the solenoid activates and kicks the switch and now the switch opens and there's a new path for the supply current to go and that's through this big whopper resistor. Big wattage resistor. Not a big value, just a big wattage. So what happened is this thing failed to operate and the heavy current continued through the solenoid and just cooked it and cooked it until somebody ran over with this machine smoking like crazy as you can imagine how much smoke must have come out of this um, and uh, pull the plug out of the uh, outlet to kill it so uh, so a jukebox is pretty important um, I think it's one of the very last surviving uh, installations that's running just as it was meant to run right at the start so uh, so after we take a closer look at this, then I'll tell you what I'm thinking about how to deal with this problem here and a bit of a story behind it. Let's go a little further down this way, though. 
So here's a here's a resistor. There you can see the style of engineering in in this machine, and it's not too surprising. It's it's very uh, uh, rugged. This is a really rugged machine. So look, the resistor's clamped in there. Now here's something a little bit interesting. It's a counter. It's got 42,455 on it. And this counter is counting the number of records that have been played by the uh, jukebox. And I don't think the counter advances anymore. So uh, the jukebox, you know, you could calculate it out. Uh, I don't know the whole history of this jukebox, whether it spent some time uh, out of service or if this thing has just literally been in service since day one. Certainly not at this location. We went into the location where it is now maybe, you know, I'm not really sure, maybe a dozen years ago, I know, or maybe more, maybe maybe 20 years ago, I really don't know. So there's the tag with the information about it. This particular one, get that on camera. Electrical selector. Yeah, that's the proper term for this. Not selection receiver. That's a different component. I was wrong before. This is called the electrical selector. Of cheaper state camera is its own shadow here. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit. There. Type. I can't quite read the type number there. I don't. Really, uh, really hard to see there. Hang on a second here. I'm put her on high close up because we're going to go look at the burn part anyway. Let's see if we can. Okay, so there's the uh, the type. As soon as I get it. ES1 one one looks kind of like it looks like almost like ESI1 L6. Now the actual information I have is for a slightly different version of this. Um, this one will handle 100 uh, individual record sides or 50 records. Um, others would handle quite a few more. So let's take a good look at this burned up guy here. Sorry for the shakiness. Here we go. So I took a look at this and I thought, oh my god, we can't we can't leave this in the machine anymore. Look at it. It's just cooked. It's really look, I you know that's copper sitting right there. Bare copper. Sure looks that way. Like the paper components actually burn. This thing might have even had flame on it, for all I know. It's very bad. Bad shape. So, uh, first thing I thought was, okay, maybe I can uh, rewind it. Um, I've rewound one thing, something like this, with much thinner wire. Uh, it's doable. It can be done. And then I thought, maybe I can find uh, a professional to do it, something you know yeah, I'm sort of a professional, but maybe uh, maybe a place like, you know, I don't have the equipment to uh, spin something like this. I have to jury rig everything up. Um, so I actually went over to a motor rewinding company and I showed him this thing. And uh, he gave me a price and I left. I left very quickly, in fact. <laughs> so, I mean, there's no way that uh, he just didn't want to do it or he thought it was over a barrel or something. So if it has to be rewound... I'm pretty sure I can do it, even though the uh, the form is probably badly damaged from cooking in there. Now, is this thing still insulated? Well, I thought uh, I'd get out my ohmmeter and poke around, and all this area here that's blackened, uh, it does not show any uh, failures in the insulation this area up here it does in fact if you can touch the copper uh, it'll uh, um, you, um, you can make contact with it Looks like there's a little bit of copper on this side too 
So I thought, well, wait a minute now. Maybe this coil isn't really shot. Maybe it's in terrible condition. Maybe it's really not quite shot. Maybe with a bit of luck, uh, I can I can uh, return this to service just as it is. So I did uh, test it by uh, well with an ohmmeter. Um, it reads a fairly low uh, resistance, about 1.5 ohms. I don't know if that's correct or not. I don't know how much wire is on there. Um, not even sure of the size of it, although I, I've measured it already. Um, so then I decided, well, let me put some uh, current through it and see what it does. And uh, sure enough, I put current through it and boom, it, uh, it snapped closed. So I think the good news is that it's actually working. So the real question I have now is, how can I make this better? What can I do um, to stabilize it in some way? Um, and what has come to mind is uh, epoxy and just putting epoxy on, especially on that area where the insulation appears to be really badly damaged, just up in here. Just throw a little epoxy on it. The other problem with it is is that the terminals burned off the posts. Uh, they were, I guess they were supported here and uh, this is burned away. And so both terminals are just floating here and I really want to stick them down somehow. So uh, maybe epoxy is the secret for that too. Wow, a lot of this wire here. Let me show you again. A lot of this wire is uh, exposed now. Well, I can just shrink sleeve that. I can shrink sleeve this here. I can slide that whole uh, what's it, what's remaining here right off. And get rid of it. I can, I can do that. Shrink sleeve a new cover on it, and solder uh, this wire back to its to its uh, mating end. I can do the same thing over here. Ooh. You know that'd be challenging to get to get this black crap off the wire. Um, they may be really fused onto the surface of the copper there. And then while I'm doing that, I'd be working this, sorry, working this back and forth, back and forth. And so the last thing I want to do is, is work this thing. But I think that that's basically the idea. I, gotta, I have to bear off something here. Or I've got to attempt to solder right to this thing. I'm better leaving that connection as is and trying to get on the end of the wire here. Which might not be in very good shape either because look at how hot it got. Wow. Yeah. Now the switch deal here. Um, this is a really curious thing for me. As I'm trying to think about what I should do about it. Uh, I think I can make it work exactly as it was intended. Like I understand what the guy was up to. The problem I have with this is why? Why did he bother doing that? This is the last guy who worked on this machine before me. Uh, guy seemed to really know what he was doing, but he he did things in a bit of a, a bit of a shoddy or a loose manner. At least in my opinion. Um, why would he put in this system? The system is designed, this little switch and resistor, to um, continue uh, to uh, break the heavy current that's going into the solenoid and, uh, it's a stupid way of saying it, but and replace it with a smaller, safer current. Uh, a stupid way of saying it. Why would that have to happen? Why would he have to add these parts? Surely this machine was designed for this part to do to do its job the way the way it was intended without this ex extra stuff. So that leaves me wondering either what is wrong in some other part of the system, the rest of the jukebox, which is back in the restaurant, and this is how that other problem was compensated for up here, uh, or for some reason that I don't understand, something was purposefully changed in the other parts of the jukebox, forcing this to have to be added here. 
Now, this is no small effort. No small effort. They had to cut a piece of steel. Ooh, don't do that. Cut a piece of steel, drill holes, figure out how to do this. Get this fixed in the right position here. The uh, switch. I mean, this is not the smallest idea. Plus. Um, you had to know that you could do this. You had to, that this lever here will move the appropriate distance and the appropriate amount. It's all kind of mysterious to me. So I think you, clearly my best move, since this jukebox has been playing in exactly this condition for and it's playing daily, it's it's used daily, um, seven days a week, for the last twelve years anyway. Uh, I should just restore this back to the way it was. Put the whole thing back in and cross my fingers it continues to work and just make sure the switch isn't loose and won't fail won't fail to operate it's a scary thought in a way that uh, despite my best efforts it might still fail and there's also uh, in the schematic the indication that there's a 100 ohm resistor in parallel across this coil, but there is no such resistor in here. You know what? It's probably this one because because I, I did measure this one and this one was 100, and all they've done is they've wired it over here in a more convenient location rather than have it here. Even though in the schematic it looks like it's right in this area, you know this resistor threw me off for quite a while because this doesn't appear on the. Uh, on the schematic. Okay. I think that's the story here. So, I'm going to mix up epoxy, epoxy cover this thing, and uh, just the area that needs uh, that needs it. And that's about all I can do to it, I think. Uh, oh yeah, and fix, fix, oh yeah, yeah, I got to do all this wire preparation. Okay, man. There we go. Okay, so. We'll start with this wire here. And and what? Still kind of soft through here. Trying not to move the uh, wire too much. Yeah. Oh. Sharp.
There we go. That's kind of what I was after. Now, it really wasn't on there very adherently in the end, once I disrupted it enough. Instead, it's on here really tight. Let's see here. Now, oh, this stuff won't. I want to give up the ghost. There it goes. Wow. Okay. Now we're going to want to put a little bit of shrink sleeve over that. Now, am I going to want to solder that before gluing it? No, I'm most likely going to want to glue it. Okay, Get another piece of shrink sleeve here. Go up the other way. That's a bigger diameter shrink sleeve, so it'll, it'll shrink over the shrunken remains of the other side. That should give a 100% coverage then. the other one. Careful on that. I'm holding my breath here. <laughs> A bit of an awkward position.
cut a couple strands there. tricky soldering to this piece of wire. Okay, boy, that took quite a bit of bending and, and the like up in here. Oops, a shrink sleeve. Oh, I gotta do the other end. shrink sleeve here. I'm not sure if that's cracked or not in through there. That's good enough though. Okay. And again, the uh, larger yellow. epoxy stage next here. Okay, so this is just about ready to apply. figure out where to position these wires.
It's like no matter how hard I try, I end up with this stuff. Oh, um, well, there's some paper under there still. So. Oh, it's going thick. If it's pulling strings, and you see that, you're pretty well done. Pretty well done. Let's just throw a little in here. There we go. Yeah, I got it all over my fingers somehow. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to let that go solid and reattach these wires. I still have to fix this, how this switch is being held in here. I'll look at that next. Okay. Okay, so a little bit of time has gone by, enough to uh, have that happen. Pretty good. <clears throat> and uh, all i got to do now is just solder these wires and fix this so it's not loose. And it's sitting in the appropriate position here. I think that pretty much amounts to tightening up this screw. So I want to make sure that Here we are. So you can see the red the red button there. Just get this wire out of the way. So I want to make sure that when this operates. See I don't think that's working good enough. has to be a, a, quite a ways forward here. Very loose down below there. quiet here because <sighs> I'm shooting this a little bit later at night and I tend to be quiet <laughs> and it, it seems that that's all that's holding it is that screw there <clears throat> so if I can shim it here that would 
do the trick. Still need a very thin, thin shim. It seems all right. <clears throat> Give you a close look at that. show. Okay, so now we just need to solder these wires. I'm going to put a little bit of solder paste on them. Foxy is holding this very nicely.
Okay. Pretty well. That's this thing ready to go back into the jukebox. Great. Fantastic. This came out pretty good here, too. Pretty good. So I've got these terminals uh, fixed in place now. So the uh, wire, the actual winding wire, won't be tugged around. This is pretty solid now. It's still kind of wimpy, isn't it? What? You know, we just have to keep an eye on that. It's just uh, going to be one of the things I have to check periodically. But it'll certainly... Uh, operate many 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 times before uh, developing any looseness in here of, of any consequence so great fantastic well thanks for watching and uh, I'll see if I can get a film of it a video of it operating <laughs>